My father taught me to make my first wreath when I was five, and I was hooked. It was freeform and lopsided, but that didn't matter. We hung it on the door with great joy. As a tradition, I've continued ever since. Every year, the festivities begin right here on the front porch when we hang the holiday wreath. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And then we get together to make the plum puddings. Martha's here. Hey, Martha. This is my mother and my sister, Kathy. Well, you've certainly been busy. I'll say. And Kathy, so you're mixing up this last batch. Right. The recipe is from the Christmas book, and we're going to get ten today. Plum puddings are a traditional English Christmas pudding. It requires a lot of chopping and mixing, so it's the perfect project to do with your family, your friends. A great advantage to these puddings is that you can make them weeks in advance so they can cure, which means that you can make a lot of them for gifts before the holiday rush begins. I'll get back to my other puddings. We're almost finished with this batch, Martha. Great. Well, now I know it's Christmas. There's a wreath on my front door, and plum puddings are steaming in the oven. Welcome to my home for the holidays. I'll be home for Christmas. You can count on me, please. Have snow and mistletoe and presents on the tree. Christmas Eve. think I get a little carried away at this time of year but for me it's what the holidays are all about in fact my only problem with the holidays is that I can't fit everything into one month that's why I am so excited about tonight's show I can really go all out and with the help of my friends and my family I can show you all my favorite holiday traditions nice on the wall next to the mirrors. Are these good, Martha? Excellent. Just stick those all into that styrofoam. This year, we've turned my studio into a Christmas workshop. I'm making several wreaths, and to make a wreath, you start with a form, like this. With a wreath form, if you can bunch it, you can make a wreath out of it. Here I'm bunching Magnolia grandiflora, which thrives in the Carolinas and in Georgia and Louisiana. Trim the stems, bunch them with wire, and using the wreath form, you can see this is a little bit wider. Take these clusters, lay them on top of each other, and with your paddle of 24 gauge wire, just keep wiring around and around, holding these clusters in place. Oh, excuse me, the cats love to sit on the work tables. Here we've bunched bay leaves with crab apples and pittosporum berries. What a gorgeous wreath this is going to make. A colorful alternative would be to use pepper berries. Pepper berries are found in the warmer states like California and Florida. Forms also come in squares, rectangles, ovals, even hearts. Another favorite and one that anybody can do anywhere in the United States is to use pine cones, like this ponderosa pine cone. Wire around the base, give it a twist, then wire this right onto your frame. This wreath lasts from year to year. Let's see what else is happening at Santa's workshop. It's easy to do here. Isn't it? My friends Jerry and Monika over here are making garlands using pine cones and pecans. They're a lot of fun to make, right. actually. I love this pecan garland, Jerry. Show us how you're doing it. Well, it's easy to string the pecans on here after they've been drilled. Using this heavy wire, you simply string the pecans on and use the wire to go as a cross piece cutting the wire off, and then with this jeweler tool, you simply twist around at the end of it, and you'll end up with a garland looking like this. It's great, and Monika, what are you doing? I'm using these spruce pine cones, and I'm starting them with glass beads. This is one of the most beautiful things to string across a fireplace or over a doorway, and you can just make yards of these garlands for the houses, okay? 
And Jerry is using the tool of the moment, a Dremel drill. In order to do the pine cone and the nut, you use this Dremel tool. And you simply put it in place. And so it's finished. Just string right along on a wire or a filament. Perfect. You only have that entire basket. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh boy, he's done so much. He sure has. Gilding an Anglo-Saxon term to overlay with gold is very appropriate for the holiday season. A sheaf of wheat sprayed with gold paint, tied with a gorgeous ribbon in Victorian days, was a symbol of bounty. I'm going to hang these alongside the mirrors in my hallway. Traditional wreath-making materials are said to possess mythical attributes. Sweet bay leaves are said to have protective powers. To make this very charming bay leaf wreath, press the bay leaves, if they're fresh, between the pages of a book, and then you can paint them with a paintbrush or dip them into the gold paint. Wrap the wreath form with some paper tape. It gives a wider base to glue the leaves. Another great idea is the holly wreath. These have been spray painted also with gold, and this holly wreath is beautiful, hung on a door or flat on a table with a candlestick in the middle. It's said that holly leaves on your front door will protect your house from thunder, lightning, and fire. So you see, if you're superstitious, holly is not only beautiful, it's also very practical. Oh, Mariana, that cranberry wreath is That's fantastic. A beautiful cranberry wreath. It is superb. You're tied with a wonderful red ribbon on the white door. For this wreath, you attach fresh cranberries to a styrofoam form with broken toothpicks, right? Exactly. Rachel has been stringing kumquats and bay leaves. Are you going to make some for your mother? I think she'd really like those. You know, they're pretty strong on mirrors, and they're also nice along the banister. They're a nice idea. It will only take you the rest of the day. <laughs> Laura, you've been so busy. I'd better get back to my work. Mm. Have fun. Are you going to gild any walnuts? Oh, later, when I make the ornaments. They're beautiful. Garlands are made out of those little useful bunches also. The only difference is you wire them to a double strand of thick twine instead of a wreath form. The use of fruit in a wreath or garland represents the fruits of the spirit, perfect for this time of year. Decorating the house with foliage during the holidays is rooted in the ancient custom of bringing greenery indoors to lighten the gloom of winter. But it does more than just add color. It fills the house with fragrance. So, deck the hall. And join us for more great holiday ideas, plus Miss Piggy, Julia Child, and First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton. Martha Stewart's Home for the Holidays is sponsored tonight by Celestial Seasonings Teas. Take a moment, satisfy the soul. When you were a kid, there was always a place you could go when the world got a little overwhelming. And the stuffed animals were friends who would listen and understand. And you'd sit and drink imaginary tea. And then one day you suddenly got a degree and a job and a certain someone to come home to. And you learn how life is. That you still need a time and a place for you. And as the day slips away, if you're lucky, so do all your worries. You pour a cup of tea and find a place where you can stop and regroup and reflect. A place where calamity loses some letters and becomes calm. And you sit and sip your tea and think and dream. Celestial Seasonings Teas. Satisfy the soul. Land Rover Discoveries frequently come home slightly more soiled than ordinary cars. But they still get washed exactly the same way. With soap and water. Performances they'd rather forget, but we won't let them. Stars in the making, Wednesday. 
objective brings you to Bosnia. Dan Rather is there. 48 hours takes you along as U.S. troops begin this dangerous mission. A special 48 hours Thursday. You can find detailed recipes and easy-to-follow instructions for the projects featured on tonight's show in the current issues of People and Martha Stewart Living magazines. a lot of snow. You okay? Good girl. Here are some lovely tree ornaments that are new to my home this year, but which come from some wonderful old traditions. These shiny aluminum ornaments, for example, bring to mind the Victorian era when Christmas trees were lit with candles and metallic ornaments like these reflected their flickering flames. These are made out of decorator's foil. It's 38 gauge, comes on rolls like this, and it's sold by the foot. One way to work with this foil is to use an embosser. You can get these at stationery stores and stock designs, or designs that you create yourself. Press hard, then cut it out with a pair of ordinary household scissors. So you can get stars like this, or medallions like this. Another wonderful use for these metallic ornaments are garlands. Use a thin wire to attach a bead, then wrap around metallic ribbon. This garland, too, made out of freeform leaves that are cut right out of the foil, is very effective hanging on a tree or around a doorway. Just make sure that when you cut the leaves, you cut long stems so that you can wind them carefully around your wire. If you want the leaves to stay in a specific position, you can use a dot of hot glue from the glue gun, and it'll hold them right on the wire. To make these leaves, first create a stencil. You can use a blunt pen or pencil to press into the foil, or you can cut out freeform designs like this and inscribe a design using an awl with sharp tool, or a scribe, then make a hole and string with metallic thread so that you can hang this anywhere you like. And if you like an antique look, just rub with fine steel wool, then treat with a tarnishing agent. If you want to add more sparkle to your tree, make these terrific icicles. Use tinsel pipe cleaner material. This is available at craft stores. Wrap the tinsel right around the handle of a long tapered paintbrush. When you remove it from the handle, you have the perfect icicle. And look at these gilded walnuts. These walnuts have been dipped into gold paint, then they're drilled through from top to bottom with a Dremel drill, then with metallic thread, create your loop. Alongside those, you can hang golden almonds wrapped in a piece of golden mesh, or chocolate coins. This is also a beautiful way to give the traditional Hanukkah gilt. These Victorian paper cornucopias are filled with candies. These are very simple to make. I've chosen all papers in blues and silvers. Cut your papers into three, four, or five inch squares. And then with a compass, make your paper quarter rounds, just like this. Wrap around a cardboard cone, apply some glue under the seam, and then just secure it with a paper clip. You can then decorate it with a variety of trims, silver rickrack, tapes, and more of that beautiful tinsel. After you trim, punch a hole in each side, run a ribbon through, and notice I've used a glass bead and a tiny aluminum ornament at the bottom. And now this is ready to hang on a tree. This year I'm also making ornaments from these molds, which were traditionally used to make German Springerly cookies. We adapted the Springerly idea by replacing the anise-flavored cookie dough with lightweight paper clay. It handles just as easily, and these ornaments that I'll make will last rather than disappear off the tree like cookies do. You can find paper clay at art supply stores. Just make sure to get the lightest weight brand you can find. Springerly molds are carved with deep, simple outlines, but filled in with exquisite detail. Now take the mold, and you can press it evenly into a piece of rolled out clay. A quarter of an inch is a good thickness. And really press firmly. And you can use your rolling pin to press evenly 
And now, when you unmold, a very beautiful detailed impression right in the clay. Cut it out square, like the mold, or you can use a biscuit cutter to create a round ornament. Put your ornament on a tray, and it dries overnight without baking. But right before it dries, don't forget to screw in a little eye screw right into the top. This will make hanging very easy. Molds like this were common in medieval times when every village had their own cookie mold craftsmen. You can still find them today, but not quite so easily. Look in cooking catalogs and gourmet stores. But there are forms that are easier to find. Peas in a pod, a fish, a star. These ornaments are made with inexpensive kitchen molds. The technique is a little bit different than working with the resin molds. You just press the clay into the back of the mold, and when you release the clay, you'll see a fine impression of the fish. Trim around the edge and let it dry. You can tie a ribbon to the eye and then use an ordinary Christmas ornament hook. You know what's really great about this whole idea? The molds do all the work. These traditional ornaments make glorious trees, but so do the ornaments you dream up yourself. I found these colorful millinery fruits at a country antique fair years ago, and they reminded me of my grandmother's hat. I tied silk organdy ribbons around each one and came up with this charming tabletop tree for my sitting room. Experiment. Use your imagination and create trees that spread the magic of the holidays throughout your entire home. Miss Piggy learns how to build a gingerbread house when Martha Stewart's Home for the Holidays returns. His wife and daughter are both pregnant. Excuse me? And the one man keeping it together... Just finished paying for the wedding. ...is the one man... Dad? Plug it at what flavor? ...least prepared for it. You gave him sleeping pills? I'm gonna have this baby tonight. Touchstone Pictures presents Steve Martin, Father of the Bride, Part 2. Your wife is in labor. George? Oh, no, no, no. My daughter is in labor. Dad! I'm ready. Yes, some nights. Rated PG. Now playing at a theater near you. George, it's 3 a.m. I, I just wanted to see our new craft make kitchen. Sure, George. I'll show you. This convenient pantry holds almost everything. Except pie. We have Lazy Susan, spice racks, roll-out trays, a vegetable bin, and everything. And the mops in the utility cabinet. Night, George. Call us for your free color brochures and start planning your new kitchen. Craft made for everyone. Dry, frizzy hair. It's always been a problem to work with, even for professionals. Frizzies is a product I developed during years of styling hair for magazines. Frizzies turns dry, frizzy hair into smooth, shiny hair quickly. Just apply frizzies to wet hair after shampooing and dry as usual. Frizzies took years to develop, but it only takes minutes to work. Frizzies hair products, available at CVS, Thrifty Payless, and Walgreens. His name is Ace, and only CVS has him. I'll be busy saving Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Ace Ventura Christmas, Wednesday. Already done. Hollywood's hottest star in performance that they'd rather forget. But we won't let them. See who pops up on Stars in the Making, Wednesday. After 29 years of marriage, they thought the magic was gone. Sometimes I wonder what we're going to do with the rest of our lives. But on a journey to see old friends, they make unexpected detours and find the passion they thought they'd lost. Hallmark Hall of Fame presents James Garner and Joanne Woodward. Breathing Lessons, next Tuesday. As the holidays approach, let's try and remember our brothers and sisters who are living with AIDS. Now more than ever, they need our love and our support. You know, gingerbread is not a holiday custom that I grew up with. Sure, we made some little gingerbread boys and girls for school, but it's a tradition that I adopted for my own family, partly because I absolutely adore the smell of gingerbread. So the more I create with gingerbread, the more I feel Christmas is all around me. You start by glazing. Glazing is coating the gingerbread with a very fine coat of icing. And I like to use what's called royal icing. It's a mixture of confectioner's sugar, egg white, and a little bit of lemon juice for flavoring. You just dab a little frosting 
on your cookie. And then with a spatula, just spread the icing all over the surface of the cookie. If you're going to make a hanging ornament, make holes in the cookies right as they come from the oven. Use a bamboo skewer like this. Just ice over the entire cookie and you can pierce it open again. Once the cookie is glazed like this, you can go ahead and do all kinds of amazing decorations. For a fancier glaze, you can try this marbleizing technique. You can use two or three or even four colors. I've just chosen to use white with red. Just stir it a little bit and then apply it to your cookie. Spread the glaze. You can see how you get those wonderful marbleized markings right on top of the cookie itself. Keep turning your spatula and it even looks better as it dries. Voila, instant marbleized icing. The only other technique you'll need to know is piping. You'll need pastry bags. And if you're gonna do decorative piping, get smaller bags. Ah, here's a good cookie. And you can put little fancy decorations, fanciful messages on your cookies. This is how you go about doing that. Just be as steady as you can. Going all the way around, you can make little dots. You can do crisscrosses, any number of things. Oh, and here's another really great idea, which I think we've just come up with this year. Little cut-out gingerbread initials for putting on presents. But tie these on with ribbons. There's a nice big ribbon hole. And what a great way to recycle. You use up the scraps of the gingerbread, and you can eat your wrapping. Once you learn glazing and piping, you can make almost anything out of this delicious traditional cookie dough. From a simple cookie like this tree that you can make with your children to a work of art like this gingerbread ice skater. An extremely special person is arriving soon to learn how to make her own holiday gingerbread house. I think I'll start her off with something very basic and very easy. You call that easy? I call it easy. Well, sure, you're a goddess. <laughs> you actually know what you're doing. Well, it takes a little bit of practice, Miss Piggy. You just go back and forth like this. I do, but I've missed my gloves. <laughs> I understand that you're coming up here to write your cookbook. Oh, my cookbook! In the kitchen with Miss Piggy. Plonk, plonk. Oh, is that the name of your new book? Uh-huh. You know, I gave you a gingerbread recipe. That's why I invited you here to see this gingerbread house in construction. If you're the author of a book, you should know how to do everything in that book. What, type? No, cook. Oh, well, the part I enjoy most is the actually finding the TV dinners at the market. I love flower arranging, too. It takes practice. Oh, I like those plastic flowers back there. Oh, you have, oh, look, you have the... Those are amaryllis. Those are real. You have, you have, you have plastic glassware like I do. I have Except no plastic glassware. You, you rub the cartoon characters off yours. Plastic is nice. <laughs> well, so is this the wall? This is a side of a gingerbread house. See, that's gingerbread. Mm -hmm. And this is how you do the windows. I think you'll find this very interesting. Can I eat it now? In a moment. Mm. These windows are made out of melted sugar. How do you and clean them? You get a little candy man <laughs> to come in? You actually know what you're doing. Oh, yes. I've been building gingerbread houses for many years. You trace this on the paper. Uh-huh. And then you put your caramelized sugar where the windows are going to be. Because what we have to do is get these windows off the paper and into the house. Mm. People do this at home? Well, I hope that everybody makes a gingerbread house. Sure, if they got a degree in engineering. <laughs> <laughs> this is called royal icing, and it's what glues everything together. Hmm, this, you do this one-handed. Ladies and gentlemen, one-handed! <laughs> well, that's incredible. Those are the windows. And you put now, this how, on how like this. <gasps> the roof I went and I got for the roof. There's these little candies called Necco wafers. That's it's a cute word, Necco. Necco. Have you heard of Necco wafers? Neck I like the name Necco. I asked my assistant to get me lots of Necco wafers. And I'm only left with white. Yep. Did you do something with the Necco wafers? Lunch. <laughs> and now let me show you how to make the roof out of these Necco oh, wafers. The roof, yes, the roof. This is another piece of gingerbread. Look at, oops, uh oh, I broke a Necco wafer. Close the door, she broke a Necco wafer. We can repair that, no trouble. What are you doing? I'm just going to glue the Necco. There is the Necco wafer repair. Is that it? So you do all those little Neccos? Yeah, all those little Neccos. You drive me out of my gourd. <laughs> well, you finish the roof, and now we have to construct this house. Are you going to help me? Well, to the degree that I'm able. 
What are you doing now? This is the most difficult part of the entire job. The actual construction, putting the walls up. And Brenda's coming over to help. Oh. Hi, Martha. Oh, just in How time. I got you a message. Something about building a house. <laughs> yes, but not your typical house. This is the gingerbread house. I need another Martha? pair of hands. Yes. Um, Miss Piggy's helping today. Martha? 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 Yes, dear. Who's the, uh, you know? Oh, excuse me. This is Ben. Ben is a builder. He's a builder? He's like a friend? He's a friend and a builder. Yes. Hello, Ben. Hi, how are you? Miss Piggy Good. speaking. Good. Now, we are going you to married? do... Yes. Oh, he has a ah, lovely see. wife, Bonnie. Who cares, Martha? You're doing a wonderful job, Ben. <laughs> and we're going to use what will surprise all of you, dressmaker mm. pins, which are our nails. And I... What are you talking about? These little pins, see? Yes, are going yes. to go into, just to hold the house so together. You this thing and you get stuck with pins. Just pull them out with pliers before you serve this. This is not amusing. Mm, yes, well, this is the only way I could figure out to hold these sides together. See, look. See, oh, sorry, can goes, I see? Oh, oh, sorry, it's a second. Ah. <laughs> it goes between, see? Watch out for your nose. Ah. Oh, I'm very, very you sorry. You got insurance on this thing? <laughs> this is kind of like carpentry food, huh? <laughs> now the roof. Okay. The Necco wafers. Oh, the Neckos. Oh, yeah, look, the Necco wafer roof is going on. Good work, Ben. Oh, boy. Look at this little charming house. It only took 15,000 man hours to make. <laughs> now, if you get terrified about you sure this is food into your gingerbread, Miss Piggy, just grit your teeth and do it because these just a few little pins really hold Can't it. Can't see a Grand Central Station over here. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want you to get lost back there. Hi, you got a girlfriend? <laughs> I have a wife. Oh, oh. okay, forget her. <laughs> and now one last roof. Oh, just hope that the roof doesn't slide. If it slides and breaks, yes, we're going to have to make it all over again. Oh. See, Miss Piggy, Builder Ben has saved the day. Builder Ben. What a nice title. <laughs> Builder Ben. Well, you have everything under control, both you ladies, so I will leave you both. To thank you. Happy, thank you. Happy holiday to both of you. Thank, thank you, you, Ben. Bye. Julia Newell, Ben. <laughs> Feliz Navidad. <laughs> Miss Piggy. Mm -hmm. See this hole here? Mm -hmm. You could put your electric lights right in here, like a string of Christmas lights, and it lights up the entire house. Well, let's step back and look at it. Will you look at that? Isn't that wonderful? What do you think? Now you can have your house and eat it, too. Yes, and that's a very, very good thing. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Miss Piggy. Be sure you know where. When we come back, more sensational holiday ideas, a visit with Julia Child, and a trip to the White House. Today's internet topic. What would you do to change the world? End hunger. Everyone gets a house. Teach people to read. Share your lunch. I would teach people a new language. Plant the tree. Make music. Make peace. Today, more students are using Apple Macintosh to share ideas on the Internet than any other computer. What would you do? Land Rover Discoveries frequently come home slightly more soiled than ordinary cars. But they still get washed exactly the same way. With soap and water. We will return after these messages to Martha Stewart's Home for the Holidays. This holiday season... Merry Christmas. You're officially divorced. Carolyn is returning to the town. We're here. And the man she left behind. You left me standing at the altar. Now she's got a second chance. We had something that most people never get. At her first love. What if it doesn't work out again? Will Connie Selica and Randy Travis celebrate A Holiday to Remember next? Hey, would you buy a used chair from Jay Thomas? Does God know about this chair? He has two of them. How to find a holiday bargain. <laughs> Let this out Wednesday. This is CBS. Congratulations, Mrs. Johnson. You won monthly magazine quick stage. $50 million. We won $50 million. I won $50 million. 
snap out of it, Mrs. J. You're not winning millions, but you're a winner with Denny's $2.99 lunch baskets every day. Golden fried shrimp, tender chicken pita, or a juicy burger for an out-of-our-mind $2.99 every day. Mrs. Johnson? Yes! Alice Johnson? No. Lynn? Oh, sorry. Wrong house. <laughs> For over 25 years, the Bear Foundation has been serving the needs of children. Children who've been abused, abandoned, neglected, and some forgotten. Children who desperately need the love of a good Christian foster home. Children who need you. If you have the love it takes, please call the Bear Foundation, 1-800-543-7037. At the Bear Foundation, we believe that every child deserves a home. A mix of precipitation in the forecast for the next couple of days. The tails at 11. Gift giving is one of the most cherished of all holiday traditions and also the most nerve-wracking. But the fun of it is choosing the right gift for the right person and then presenting it in a very special way. That's how even the most ordinary items can become extraordinary. Like a garden pot, a clay pot full of handy tools for the gardener, rubber shoes, a really good pair of gardening secateurs, goatskin gloves, some copper tags for marking plants, a copper watering can that'll last for ages, putting something that can be planted right away, like narcissus bulbs, which can be forced indoors. Another great gift is a kitchen basket that can be filled with useful utensils and gadgets like whisks and scrapers and brushes and spatulas strainers and bowls kathy and i are making some gifts this year that will be just great in this basket now if you have the time and really want to personalize your gifts try making your own wrapping paper my daughter alexis and i have been making wrapping paper ever since she was a little girl these are some of the examples of what I've been making this year. It's a lot of fun. All you need is paper, anything from inexpensive craft paper to metallic tissue paper, and a few items from the art supply store. Look at this, yards and yards of wood grain paper. Tape the paper that you're going to wood grain onto a very flat surface. And all you need is a very special tool called a wood grain roller. It's made out of rubber and some acrylic paint. Now paint long stripes of color with a sponge brush then this is the secret you have to pull and turn and pull and turn and you have wood grain another great paper technique is to stamp paper use decorative rubber stamps colored or metallic ink pads you can even use this stamping technique on paper bags and on little tags there. This stamping is great to do with kids. And what a beautiful gift this stamped paper makes. A very easy way to make your own gift packages is to use paper bags, white ones or brown ones, decorated with ribbons, foliage, or even a candy cane. This bag has its top folded down, two holes punched through the folds, and then a peppermint stick is pushed through a rubber band. This rubber band technique works very well with foliage like this holly. Another way to use a paper bag is to cut little slits through the top, draw a piece of seam binding ribbon through. You can decorate with a beautiful card and line the edge of the bag with tissue paper that's been painted with scissors. And for presents that are unusual sizes, you can find bottle bags for long gifts like candles or scissors and for a great gift like this grill pan. How would you ever wrap that? Well, here's a fine solution. A brown paper shopping bag with a beautiful silken ribbon drawn through the top, lined with tissue. There are so many ways to give a thoughtful, personal gift. And it doesn't have to take a lot of time or a lot of money. Kathy and I are putting together a slew of presents. How many of these have you made today? At least 10. Oh, okay. <laughs> Soap in a bottle. Fill the bottles with a dishwashing liquid of your choice. This is an economical and environmentally sound gift. Decorative bottles like these are readily available at many stores. And you can find bar pourer tops and corks. Cork the bottle tightly, then tie the pourer top around the neck with a colorful ribbon. 
Another great use for pretty reusable bottles is to fill them with scented vinegar. I like to make them every year. What do you uh, want to fill yours I would, with? I have a selection of different herbs here. We have sage, rosemary, fennel, marjoram. Garlic can also be used in them. And the leaves we take, we clip, and we just poke them into the bottle. Oh, okay, yeah, using a, a chopstick. Get them down there nicely, and then fill up with either cider or wine vinegar. And it takes about two to three weeks for the uh, color and the infusion of the uh, herb to stay in the vinegar. And I love the idea that you can reuse the bottles. These are packing tags, and you can just use them to label the contents of the bottle. Tie on or sew on little branches of crab apple, pittosporum berries, even a holly leaf with its berries. Now, if you have more time and want to do some baking, try these ideas. Here's one of the plum puddings with its original parchment top. This is how you give it as a gift. And Kathy, you're doing a great job wrapping these. I like this old towel. Oh, isn't that Look. nice? Old linen is a favorite wrapping technique. And your original label. Oh, that's from 25 years ago. It's a great thing. Just make the original and then year to year, just color Xerox. And on the label, you have to remember to put down the directions for serving as well as the wonderful hard sauce oh, I recipe. I love that. Which Don't is count your towels. Another really great idea, if you like to bake, is the Italian panettone baked right in a buttered brown paper bag. This is great, wrapped in a cellophane bag, tie it with a string and a festive ribbon and a piece of holly or pepper berries. And one of my favorite gifts, and one that I make every single year without fail, are the cookies in the reusable tins. I use charlotte molds like this, or ice cream molds, and these are little almond crescents. I got this recipe years ago, and when I was in eighth grade from Miss Bear, my home economics teacher, and this recipe has really held up. But fill the tin and wrap it, too, in a sheet of clear cellophane with a beautiful moray ribbon. And don't forget the oh, tin label. That pretty little handmade label. And you can rest assured that a delicious gift from the kitchen will always be appropriate and appreciated. Just right. And look, did you know that stockings were originally hung to catch coins falling from Santa's pockets as he came down the chimney? My mother made these stockings from dish towels. Imagine what you could come up with after visiting a few tag sales. Well, the rooms are decorated, the trees are trimmed, and the gifts are wrapped. My home is almost ready for the holidays. Later, Martha hosts Julia Child in the kitchen. Next, a visit with First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton. What a place to dream. Here, between Venus and Mars. We spend half our lives spinning through the dark. Now, as the night shakes out its heavenly spawn, we curl up and sleep till dawn. Serta, we make the world's best mattress. The end of the day can be a beginning. When work is done and kids are in bed, and the day is finally your own, you share a cup of tea and remember a time when it was just the two of you. You remember how you joke about what you'd name your kids if you ever had them. And you remember why you got together in the first place. Celestial Seasonings Teas. Satisfy the soul. Some of the world's best tasting water comes from an unexpected source. The Brita water filtration pitcher transforms tap water. The special Brita filter reduces chlorine taste and odor, eliminates 93% of lead, taking tap water back to nature. Brita, tap into great taste. Available at Lecter's and Bed Bath & Beyond. Join Nicole Kidman, Courtney Cox, Mary Tyler Moore, First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton, and me, Paula Zahn, Wednesday, when I host People Magazine's Yearbook 95. Be there as we meet this year's heroes, review the hottest trends, and reveal the sexiest man alive. It's all in the People Yearbook 95, Wednesday. When terrorism comes to a small town, it hits too close to home. My own daughter plants a bomb. I'm guilty. Picket fences back at its original time, Friday.
You can find detailed recipes and easy-to-follow instructions for the projects featured on tonight's show in the current issues of People and Martha Stewart Living magazines. Table decorations are as much a part of my holidays as wreaths and Christmas trees. This pedestal of sugared fruits, for example, is so spectacular to look at and so very easy to make. What you need is fruit at room temperature. I like an assortment of fruit. Make sure it's unblemished and beautiful. Mix equal parts of egg white and water. You can also use powdered egg whites. Don't beat it to a froth. You don't want a lot of bubbles. With a soft brush, completely coat the fruit. In another bowl, have lots of super fine granulated sugar. Put the coated fruit on a rack to dry in a warm, dry place. All of these fruits look spectacular, mounded up on pedestals. I stack them one on top of another in a pyramid shape. You can add a little bit more height and elegance by adding a goblet. This could be filled with the smaller fruits. For centuries, fruit was usually dessert, and the pyramid shape allowed more pieces to be brought to the table at once. A pyramid like this, if it contains soft and hard fruits, will last a day or two on your table. But if you use all hard fruits, like the pears and the lemons and the limes and the apples, it'll last all during the holidays. This apple lantern is very easy to make, and what's special about this is there's a little tiny votive candle inside the pyramid that can be lit with a long match taper. All you need are apples. I like them with the leaves still on the stems and some good wooden toothpicks. Insert it here, keep stacking in concentric circles up until you get a perfect pyramid. And this beautiful, beautiful pedestal of cut citrus fruits, so beguiling and so aromatic. It's pretty with the lemons, limes, oranges, and kumquats. And what makes this especially beautiful are these long tendrils of citrus peel. And you get these by going around and around the fruit with a citrus stripper. And then just drape these long tendrils of citrus rind over your fruit. What a great way to greet the new year. Of course, table decorations are hardly limited to fruit. Look at these extraordinary celosia or coxcomb topiaries. Celosia is an annual flower that grows very well in most gardens and it dries very well. Pick it while the flower tops are very brightly colored and plump. Break them into florets and affix them with hot glue right to styrofoam cones. And you have the most professional looking pair of topiaries. Another very, very nice idea for the holidays and making use of one of the real American fruits is the bright red cranberry tree. Choose hard cranberries not frozen cranberries, they must be fresh. In a little flower pot, I'm using these acro agate pots, put some floral clay, very heavy, and it weights down the base of the flower pot. And take a styrofoam cone and secure it to the clay with a bamboo skewer. The way you attach the cranberries into the styrofoam is with a broken toothpick. Spray paint the cone red to conceal the spaces between the berries. And you can apply a rim of bay leaves around the base. Very simple. Perhaps the most classic of all the decorations are what I call tiny trees, miniature topiaries of boxwood set in delicate white porcelain egg cups. Boxwood is a traditional hedge material. It grows in the northeast, it grows down in the south. It's very slow growing and a very fine, fragrant evergreen. To make these little topiaries, shape a piece of oasis. Oasis is the material that florists use when they want to keep things wet. And you just carve this with a knife into your pyramidal shape. And notice how this fits into, it's been carved, so it fits into the egg cup. Soak it well with water and cut boxwood all in equal lengths, two to two and a half inches long, leaving about an inch of stem. And insert the shiny boxwood sprigs. Start at the bottom and work your way all the way up till the top. Let the mold make the shape. Keep these little trees sprayed and the oasis damp and they'll stay fresh for a week or two. 
And because their elegance is so simple, they'll look good in any house. I think they're beautiful right here. You know, Miss Piggy was a great help when it came to landscaping our gingerbread house. She tasted everything. The sugar cube walls, the sugar crystal walkway. I think she was a very happy pig. There's just one more thing to add. Because whether it's your house, my house, a blue house, or even a white house, every house looks better with a holiday wreath. How about right here? I think that is exactly where it goes. Think so? Right there in the middle on the top. <laughs> Good. Looks great, Martha. That's where we'll put it. What a perfect for this house. It looks great. Yeah, doesn't it? And I also love the idea that you did this wreath so that it corresponded with Washington, D.C. and exactly. its tree. Washington's tree is the oak tree. That's right. And we did 50 acorns that are gold leaf from the red oak tree. These symbolize the 50 states of our mm -hmm. nation. I like that because every Christmas here at the White House, we try to display something from every state and the territories. Everything about Christmas in the White House is a real reflection of America. As it should be. This, as you've always said, is our house. It is. It's everybody's house. <laughs> Where will you be for the holidays? Oh, we'll be right here. We'll be home for the holidays. You will, and I'll be home too. And I wish you the merriest of holidays. Thank you. Next, Martha joins the First Lady of the Kitchen, Julia Child. Dry, frizzy hair. It's always been a problem to work with, even for professionals. Frizzies turns dry, frizzy hair into smooth, shiny hair quickly. Frizzies took years to develop, but it only takes minutes to work. Today's internet topic. What would you do to change the world? End hunger. Everyone gets a house. Teach people to read. Share your lunch. I would teach people a new language. Plant the tree. Make music. Make peace. Today, more students are using Apple Macintosh to share ideas on the Internet than any other computer. What would you do? Dry, frizzy hair. It's always been a problem to work with, even for professionals. Frizzies turns dry, frizzy hair into smooth, shiny hair quickly. Frizzies took years to develop, but it only takes minutes to work. She's the toast of Broadway. Now she'll be on our stage. And now they play it. Julie Andrews. Tomorrow on the all-new CBS This Morning. It's two hours of mystery with conspiracy, kidnapping, and murder. And all the clues lead to Jessica. I have been subpoenaed, jailed. I'm currently evading a process. The feds won't stop till they get their woman. She's got to catch me. The Hunter becomes the hunted with back-to-back -back episodes of Murder, She Wrote, Thursday. Visit us on the World Wide Web to receive more information on the recipes and how-to techniques as seen on Martha Stewart's Home for the Holidays. People always ask what I want for Christmas. Well, I'm getting it right here and right now. Julia Child. Not in a book, not on a shelf, but in the flesh and at my kitchen counter. Hello, so Julia. to be with you, Martha. Thank you it. so much for coming. Julia and I have been making pastry for a croquembouche. Maybe you should describe a croquembouche. All right. I haven't <laughs> made one for I don't know how long. <laughs> croquembouche is a beautiful pyramid of filled cream puffs. And they're all glued together with caramel. They are indeed. And I'm filling them with vanilla pastry cream. And the tool Julia's using is an well, injecting tip for your pastry bag. I don't think you could do it without it. And you... I'm piping the pot I really first learned how to make pot from your book, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. Mm -hmm. Pot is the classic pastry dough used to make the puffs. Pipe them onto parchment-lined cookie sheets, then glaze them with a mixture of egg yolk and heavy cream. 
The glaze does two things. It makes the tuff golden yellow, but it also smooths down the top. Mm -hmm. Pata choux, what does that mean in French? Choux is a cabbage, and they, they do look like old cabbage. Have you figured out how many hundreds per boot? We want to make a pretty large one of these no. things, so it takes about 300 puffs. It's a nice thing for all the family to get in on it. It's okay. fantastic. But you could do it yourself, but you wouldn't ever be able to go to bed. <laughs> I don't know how long. Well, what I like to do is make the puffs and freeze them in an airtight container, mm -hmm. let them come to room temperature in that same container, then put them in the oven to crisp them up. We have some in the oven right now that are freshly baked, and some of these were frozen. I'll see if that one batch is ready. Good. Well, how long did they cook? Well, 22 minutes to 25 minutes mm -hmm. at 425 degrees. Now, always, according to your recipe, <laughs> stick mm -hmm. a sharp knife into each one just to allow the steam to escape. Otherwise, it's soggy and soggy. Right. Okay. Then they can be filled with the pastry cream. Now we're all set up to build our croquembouche. Have you got the caramel going? Oh, here we go. The pot of sugar is ready to put right into the cold water to stop the cooking. Julia, how do you judge when the caramel is done? I don't really come up for a while, and then I take it off and swirl it around until all the sugar is clear. And then I put the cover on it so the steam comes up on the cover and washes down the sides of the pan, and then you don't get any crystallization. I think so. It's looking very good, I think. Yeah, so if you'd like to start building your croquembouche... How long will these hold up, having been filled? I like to make a croquembouche as close to my party time yeah, as possible. Too. Two, three hours before the party. You can stack them and leave them in a dry, cool place. Croquembouche are really traditional wedding cakes. You know what croquembouche means. Crackle in the mouth. That's right. Or crunch in the mouth. That sounds nicer. Tell me about your trip to the White House. That must have been such fun. Well, it is so glorious at the White House. I got to hang the wreath with Mrs. Clinton. How wonderful. With her yes. herself. She says the White House is our house. It belongs to the people. It does indeed. Did you give them a crock and boot? Wouldn't it be fun to send one down? <laughs> it would, I think. Well, that must have been fun. The yours look so neat. Then they go, surprise you. <laughs> look at mine, I'm sort of doing it any which Well, way. yours is the country style. I love it. Let's finish them and do a little bit of a surprise oh, decoration. Oh, well, I think these look pretty spectacular. They're wonderful looking, and they're, they're solid. They are very solid, but I'd like to show you my special way of embellishing these croquembouche. Like to see that. Okay. Good. Well, what we have to use is a wire whisk that's been snipped off. This is for spinning the sugar. You take a whisk like this, just snip off the top. Then you have 20 or 30 fingers that's instead of... That's a wonderful idea. We have some sugar at the thread stage. In other words, you boil it up and then let it cool down. Exactly. And I just fling the sugar. And you got plenty of newspaper on the and floor, a lot I see. of newspaper covering everything. And you really have to get the caramel just at the right stage. Most fun to do this in front of your guests. Oh, I would think. Everybody's quite fascinated with spinning sugar. Just the right temperature, isn't it? Exactly. And then it falls like a waterfall of gold. Now, the other thing I'd like to do with this is to spin a little bit of sugar around that's the croquembouche nice itself. Really, it's very pretty. Yeah, mm -hmm. a veiling of gold. What do we do with the golden I'll show strand. you what I do. And that is... Angel hair. Put a golden halo of this spectacular sponge sugar around the bottom. And just put a little top knot right on the very that's, top one. That's very festive looking. Does it look good? Oh, one for you. Oh, I think this is a, this is great. And I really, I like a top knot of this stuff rather than something else because it's all in keeping with it. I can just be picked yeah, off and just devoured. Mm. Well, I can't think of a better Christmas present making my favorite dessert with America's icon of cooking. Thank you, thank you. Well, I've had a good time, Martha, and I've learned, learned a lot, as I always do when I watch you. Well, I have learned so much well. from you over the years, and... And this has been a great treat. Oh, we're wonderful people, are we not? <laughs>
a place where calamity loses some letters and becomes calm. And you sip your tea and think and dream. Celestial Seasonings Teas. Satisfy the soul. I love having friends over, especially during the holidays. Pure One helps make our home really wonderful this time of the year. Finding the perfect gifts is something I really enjoy. I usually overdo it, but that's the fun of it. It is the best store for exploring. <laughs> I go to Pure One, I find what I want. It's easy. There's Pure One on my tree and under my tree. Of course, my friends think I'm a genius. Pure One Imports, a world of holiday treasures. Martha Stewart's Home for the Holidays was brought to you by Celestial Seasonings Teas. Take a moment. Satisfy the soul. It's the most wonderful time of the year. You know, preparing for the holidays is in itself a way of celebrating them. Because whatever you create, a wreath, an ornament, a gift, a dessert, whether by yourself or with your friends, adds to the spirit of the season and helps fill the house with joy. What a lovely way to welcome guests into your home for the holidays. ideas tonight that will add joy to your holiday celebrations this year and for many years to come. I'll be home for Christmas. You can count on me. Please have snow <laughs> and mistletoe. Oh, the